Hello, my internet friends. John Gibson here with I Need Examples. Today we are going to cover the Excel Days 360 function. The Excel Days 360 function calculates the number of days between two dates using the 360 day calendar. A 360 day calendar is composed of 12 months with 30 days in each month. This type of calendar is used by some businesses to internally track changes in accounts. The Days 360 function in Excel becomes useful in preparing reports such as an aging schedule for debtors or computing a payment schedule for accounting systems that are based on 12 30-day months. The Excel Days 360 has three arguments, start date, end date, and method which is an optional argument. The method defaults to false and will use the US method to compute days. When true, the formula will use the European method to calculate days. I will explain how the method options work inside our examples. In our first example, I will cover the basic formula. In column A, we have our start date. In column B, we have our end date. Column C, we have our method. And in column D, we have our results. In cell D2, let's enter our formula. Equal days, 360, open parentheses, A2 for our start date, comma, B2 for our end date, comma, C2 for our method. If we omit the method, the default will be false. Close parentheses. In cell D2, you will see that going from January 1st to February 1st is 30 days, even though January has 31 days. Remember, the Day 360 formula gives every month 30 days. In cell D3, our start date is after our end date, so the result is still 30 days, but now it is negative. Cell D4, you will see that our day is still 30 days, even though February only has 28 days in 2023. Again, Days 360 gives every month 30 days. For cell D5, we are calculating the full year, January 1st to December 31st. Every month has 30 days, so 12 times 30 is 360 days. The next four cells in our table, we will cover how the method option works. In cell D6, we are showing zero. When the method is false, we are using the US method. When the start date is the last day of the month, the date is treated like the 30th day of the month, and if the end date is also the last day of the month, it will also be treated like the 30th day of the month. So that is why we have a value of zero. The same is true for cell D7, but with an extra rule added. Our start date is October 30th, 2023 and our end date is October 31st, 2023. The rule here is if the start date is equal to the last day of the month or is equal to 30, then the end date will also be 30, giving us zero in our result. The rule changes again in cell D8. Now we have a start date of October 29th, 2023, and an end date of October 31st, 2023. Since the start date is the same month and less than the end of the month and less than 30, and the end date is October 31st, 2023, the end date will now read as the first day of the next month to keep with the 30 days in the month rule. That is why we have a result of two. If we set our method to true, as we did in cell C9, you will see that the result is one. A true method will use the European method which will set the start and end of the month if the end of the month date is used in either. Since our end date is set to October 31st, 2023 with a true method, the date used will be October 30th, 2023, giving us a result of 1. In our next example, we will create an aging table. Again, we will use our Days 360 formula with the method of false. We want to group our invoices by our aging value, which I have already created an IFS formula to do this. I have a video for the IFS formula, which I will link in the description below. In cell D14, let's add our formula. Equals days 360, open parentheses, B14 for our start date, comma, today, open and close parentheses as our end date. We want to keep our aging updated every day, so using the today function, we'll use the current date and keep our Excel worksheet updated. And then close parentheses. Now we have our aging days, which has triggered our aging value. 
As you can see, we have a good grouping of our aging. This information can be used in a pivot table to show us how much money is due for each aging group. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. Comment below if you would like to see examples on a specific topic. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time.